this is Lost Electronics. Um, I'm gonna have another video of the day. Um, it, I just knew what I did is I looked done and found out uh, through the Ubiquitous website that there was another firmware update, uh, which is going to be the nice 1.8.6. Um, under the notes, what it shows is for us to fix is uh, the kernel crashes for in the DPI and it upgrades DNS masking and fixes the vulnerabilities for multiple different one, uh, multiple different uh, CV numbers. So luckily, I think we was ahead of this and actually was able to make sure they made some patches. So it may be a good time to update. I haven't tested on how stable it is yet. Um, so again, if you're a small business, I'd probably hold off just a few more days and see it is. But from a security standpoint, since it, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different updates here that would indicate that for CV numbers, I, I would say that you may want to try to update this uh, to the version of 1.8.6 uh, on the firmware. Uh, since the switch version really hasn't changed, the set the uh, what was going through the settings hasn't really changed that much. Um, it's the same classic view we can go into here. Um, if you want to go and just like if you want to do any kind of updates to show we are at the 1.8.6, here's the here is the actual check for updates here. It tells you how much your memory you're using and the processor capabilities in there, just like the normal. And we have the application, which I don't use, protect or access or uh, talk. I just haven't used them. I don't need them right now. I just got the UDM Pro because I want to be able to have it. Um, I, I I like my IDS system, and I like make sure that I'm not capped out at one gigabit, and especially when we transfer large files. And I also like the capability of the nice uh, 10 gig uh, links onto the by using the uh, SMPS Plus uh, adapter. Um, so I'm just going to go run down through just like any other things to show you that hasn't really anything that's changed on this update because, again, the Switch version has updated. Mainly it's been because of the security that's changed here. Um, no things that should change here. Let's just run a speed test to kind of show this, like, the basic what the speed test looks like here. Nothing's really changed here. Um... Like I do in all my other videos, I'm gonna go ahead and just run down those menus here. You'll notice that really hasn't nothing has changed here. The settings are exactly the same as they were before, but basically they definitely have updated the CV information here to, to definitely uh, check that my network has been attacked multiple times. So again, it's a good thing they finally that I can usually my IDS system is up to date. So. 28th here. This is all that this happened on the 28th. You can see that somebody's really trying to hack my network. So thank you, Ubiquity, for having a good IDS system. It's definitely helped out for uh, trying to prevent any attacks or at least mitigate as much as we can here. Um, but shows all your devices. They're basically it's connected here. Here's the event log. It tells you where everything's been going on. Created a backup. Shows all the devices that are currently showing that what we done here and doing the upgrades and pulling that from here so uh, we went through that standpoint everything's looking good here course help center settings those notice the normal settings that we have from the previous times that we haven't really changed anything from the previous things but we'll just go ahead and run down through them just to show you there's not really anything that's changed here Mainly is the security updates, and those are why I would recommend updating to this version. I can't tell you how stable it is because I just I upgraded it myself. I will have to go and I will have to follow up here and uh, let you know how it is. Here we'll go ahead and just enable these two for a second. We'll just re disable them here in a moment. As soon as we get through here, if you want to show here just to see what the show what they're like, apply changes. I don't like the layout, but again, it doesn't mean that somebody else may not. You can tell that this is a layout here. They have them because it doesn't have uptime utilization in the last 24 hours. Uh, it tells you what my what everyone's using on my network right now. So you can see real-time up and down speeds so that people are using my network right now. 
Um, tells you all the devices and what they are, so you can see the, the settings here. Again, these are just the normal network mapping here. So in here, trash statistics and all that information still here. All the devices. Again, vulnerabilities and everyone stacking what they've been doing. Top thread threads and stuff here. So again, my IDS system is doing an amazing job on here. I haven't really, it's uh, again, this is only was attacking my network, but again, my ID system, I, my IDS system has been amazing at stopping those attacks. So, again, kudos to uh, Big Witty on that. Um, let me go ahead and we're just gonna go ahead and go here and just go through all our different settings really quickly, just to show here that we haven't really changed anything here, just for the settings here. DPI manager. This is one of the things they've helped fix and glitch some of the glitches here. Services, control, dynamic, they haven't really changed anything there. Profiles have not really changed. So controller, nothing's really changed there, so we haven't really seen any kind of changes from that standpoint. Again, we're gonna just turn off my new dashboard. I like client menu is still cool, but I don't want to have anything else there. This is the data just shows you notifications and tells you what you can do and all your threat management logs and stuff and how it's been pushed and what they are. Minutes and devices, which is a good idea here to This again, it's they have a backup of the site of the firmware. We have our backup of our uh, device right here. So if we do have any issues, so that's right there. Everything's been really stable for what I can see so far. But again, I haven't seen again. I haven't seen very many times with this went through here. Just normal help and sites. So again, you have noticed that there's not really much has changed here. Tells your logs, kind of the basic information. Tells you how many failures, WPA timeouts and failures, how many blocks they had when people are trying to get on the network. Um, if there's any kind of interference and in what their what channels and everything is here. I have had found out for the wireless settings that are best at least for my network, and it's going to vary depending on where you're at. Private neighbors aren't going to be too happy with me, but again, I don't. I'm not really that concerned. Um, about that too much, but um, when you go to radio, I keep mine at 120 hertz, 160, and then auto, and then we cue that up here so that we apply radio so I can actually utilize that. I'll say provision, that's where I like keeping my settings at personally. Don't know, and I won't mess with the other ones here, but right now that's the time. Those are the settings I personally like using. Shows you everyone cues, and if you want to do a run a scan, like we can see here, if we would run a scan here, and it would tell us it there, it would show me what my neighbors and stuff are using, but I don't need to do that right now. Tells me the bands, what everyone's using, the times, the speaks, when everyone gets on my network, and what's going on, the channel utilization. So. Again, it gives me a lot of information here. Those channel bands do basically tell them how many channels it uses on that radio, and so it broadcasts them as certain bands. I like putting them on the higher frequency sets because I usually get the best speeds on them. And there's just my normal YouTube channel and one of my other videos I have out there. So here we'll go ahead and go back. Everything's looking good. Channel 36, everything's fine from here. You just tell here everything's looking good. So again, there's not really that much has changed uh, on this newest update. My biggest thing is, remember here, here's how you can be able to do the instructions for the basic ones here. 
this is how you can SSH into this here for the aviation need. You want to check the pro, the checksum. And then again, you can always click on here in the instructions for this portion here, which is the community. Tells you all the introduction to the new operating system here. And again, here's the new remote uh, access available, local port uh, available. And then SSH is disabled by default. After setup is enabled in advanced setup. And just tells you, hey, this is what you're usually can be able to do here. Here's your UDM Pro, and here's the new firmware releases. And then it tells you what our new controller bundle and what it actually has been doing here. Fixes, go ahead and fix this the file that you push emails and push the notification UDM Pro back adjustments uh, data and minor bug fixes so that's good So, so again, here is our tells me what what uh, version I'm on here that ha that it tells you how to SSH in case we need to fix some of these minor bugs. And of course, there's just a normal form site you have here. Again, I will put in the new, I'll put the firmware link for if you want to download the newest firmware for Ubiquity. I will put this under the show notes when I put basically go here in a few minutes when I actually upload this video. Um, again, there's not much has changed. My biggest thing I'd say, the biggest thing I would say has changed is they definitely under the lease notes, which is the most important things. Again, is this information all the CVE updates? So they definitely fix security problems. So again, um, after make sure it's stable for a few days, I would say I probably would recommend this update. It's not like you're just fixing; you're not just changing features. It's not like they're just doing little small tweaks. They are updating huge security vulnerabilities into the network. I haven't exactly looked into what these are, so if you ever want to look at what those are, just to see what they were. So let's go ahead and go to the first one. We can always do a Google search on them. may not be a sum here so again this looks like a red hat vulnerability it tells you these are uh, a DNS attack reposition here so again more m more vulnerabilities we get patched and more difficult it is to, for somebody to break into your network so um, again these are one of the things that I always say this that want to say that we're new here. I always go make any time there's a new firmware update. I always test it just to see, make sure, because again, the worst thing I'll do is go back to my SageCom router for a little bit of time until I can fix it if they do have any major bugs. But I have not ran into any of them. Again, I try to keep my controller simple. It's not like I have I'm not running a corporate network, so I'm not running uh, over uh, hundreds of devices. I'm only running probably about 30. I'm I'm just I'm work I just use. The most I'm using for a business side of it is working two computers working from home. My wife and I both work uh, from a remote uh, from a re uh, work at home uh, for, uh, through our company, and uh, that would be the only thing that um, that we use. But this UDM Pro has been amazing. I like the security features. I'm glad I can have it to protect my network. Uh, help with with again with my remote clients network again I don't want be my be be the weakest link and let it, something happens to my company so again I always make sure I'm glad I have the updates for my uh, IDS so that again they, my intrusion detection system so uh, um, this has definitely been uh, it's been help I can say this is updates I I completely enjoy here. Uh, these are again. These are just the basics here of showing here. Just the basic basic menus again. Um, and this again, I've made multiple of these videos in the past. Um, but those are the things that are there. Um, the other things you may want to check out if you haven't checked them out already. 
Um, if you're interested, if you don't like watching ads, um, if you have, if you like Raspberry Pis, it's a very easy project to do. Is put a pie hole on it. I was able with the with putting on the block list. I have been able to block ads from everything from our. Um, if you use Spectrum TV, I was able to block the ads on the Spectrum TV apps. I've been able to block ads on uh, some of the uh, through Hulu, and I'm working on going in specifically fine tuning CBSs in that way. Um, I should be able to block the majority of those pop up ads. So you're not technically what you do is you're just creating a black hole for them. So. Um, you can kind of do that through if you have the right thing for PSN's firewalls, but again, most times with the uh, UDM Pro, you probably just have it where you just have the location here um, where you may just want to. Um, I also like using it because I can look at what's going on with the logs, but again, that's just for myself. This can see what's going there. I don't want to keep too much of information on it, but again, um, but at least it gives the capability. The other thing I'm going to actually have in the next few days too, um, I'm going to be also uploading another video here pretty soon, is comparing the cameras between the UD, uh, the um, the um, Galaxy S10 and the uh, the new uh, basically the new uh, um, Ultra S21. So we'll show a little bit of different photos and kind of go through some basics on that one. I know I haven't had a lot of cell phone the first time I have a cell phone reviews on this channel, but again I want to keep on doing uh, videos. I would definitely like everyone's in the community's feedback on when I make these videos on what the basically they like to see. Again, I try to keep my UDM Pro with my UDM Pro, but again, if you are interested in my other videos, I, I would appreciate if you want to check out any of my other videos. And if you like this channel, please subscribe so it lets me know that you like this channel here. And again, if you have any feedbacks, uh, feedback for me, I would definitely like to try to uh, respond to it and help with uh, trying to answer the questions as best as possible. Um, uh, this is content is here just so I can help with making sure that everyone knows what the new updates look like and see if they want to go with it. So, um, thank you again for choosing my channel and uh, coming to my channel. I appreciate all my. Uh, it, without, uh, I like my content. I'm glad everyone likes wa watching this content. These channels are only as good as what uh, the people that want really want to watch them. And again, I'm glad I can help with going and keep on. Uh, Oh, I'm glad I have the community support, and I'm glad everyone has uh, joined my videos in the past. Um, and thank you again for all my fans who like my channel and my content.